Uh, there's T.S. Harrier also with us. Uh, T.S., what are your calls? Uh, see, we like uh, three stocks, and the first stock is Gati, which is uh, uh, obviously a logistics play, and we like this stock more because of the you know, GST bill, which we expect is likely to be passed in the upper house today. Um, you know, we have a target of about uh, 250 or 220 for Gati, and the stock is quoting about 185, 190 at this point of time. Uh, the second stock we have is Ujivan, which is a microfinance company, which got listed recently, mm -hmm. and it has announced uh, seller results in the last quarter, mm -hmm. and you know, at the current market price, um, uh, uh, you know, which is about 470 or 480. We believe that there is an um, upside of about 15-20% uh, to about 550 on this stock. Mm -hmm. And this is the second stock that we like. The third, of course, is a very old game in the market, which is ITC, mm -hmm. uh, which we believe that um, uh, it, it should be one of the star performers uh, uh, as far as the FMCG space is concerned. Uh, there's, a, there's been a good monsoon. I think it should gradually impact as far as the rural demand is concerned. And ITC could actually be a very big beneficiary. So we are looking at a target of about 280 on ITC in, in, in about one to two months' time frame. All right, uh, just want to get a sense one by one on each of these. Uh, let me take Gati, for instance. Uh, what is your, uh, what, what, what kind of an EPS are you working with for FI 2018 for Gati? Or how are you valuing it? No, we are looking at Gati more as a you know momentum play rather than okay. as a fundamental play because okay. I think it's probably uh, too early to look at it as a fundamental play. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way we are looking at Gati is that if the GST bill gets approved, then the big beneficiaries among the uh, logistics company could be Gati. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at playing that momentum from the current levels to about 220. We are not taking a very fundamental view on Gati at this point of time. Okay, because I'm just uh, looking at the kind of uh, uh, estimates that we have for Gati. It's already trading at about 20 times... Uh, uh, price to earnings for FI 17 and if I uh, look at FI 18 earnings, then it's at about 15 times. So this is just a momentum play with a clear target. That's a crucial thing to uh, look at. Uh, TSR has a clear target, 220 on Gati, 183 right now. That's where the stock is trading. Let me uh, take up Ujjivan Financial. Again, uh, very strong numbers, but this is now going to become a finance bank, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's a cost of capital drops, but its cost to income ratio will increase. Its margins will squeeze a little bit. That's what they're expecting. Um, so you expect that uh, the momentum will continue or it will consolidate a little bit? See, you know, you're right. The, the whole concept of a you know, bank that they are proposing to convert to is definitely going to bring about two changes. The first change is that it's going to make it a little more regulated than what it is today. So there is going to be a regulatory cost to it. Uh, secondly, as you rightly said, the cost of capital is going to slightly go up as a consequence. So I think that is, uh, in, in my view, the risk as far as Ujivan is concerned. But what is more important is that uh, companies like Ujivan, companies like uh, you know, uh, Equitas, they are playing a very important role. And the role is that when uh, the PSU banks are not able to expand their asset books in a big way, it is these you know, microfinance companies which are getting into these rural, semi-urban, morphosal areas and actually making a dent into the PSU bank's market. So I think that is what we are betting as far as Ujivan is concerned. And we believe that there could be some concerns in the short term because of the bank conversion. But as a value play, we still see a lot of value in Ujivan at these prices. Uh, tell me something about uh, ITC now. Again, t how does one value this stock? If I look at ITC at, uh, at what? Currently at about 257 rupees. It's FI 18. Price to earnings is <laughs> not cheap at all. I mean, FI 17, I think it's trading at what? For a largely uh, um, an FMCG play with a CAGR estimated growth of about 11, 12%. To trade at that earnings rate, uh, multiple is very, very expensive, isn't it? See, a couple of things um, on it. Uh, the first thing is that um, if you look at a lot of these uh, you know, FMCG companies, and I'll share a very interesting uh, analysis I was going through. Uh, over the last 12 years, uh, the sector that has actually beaten most of the other se sectors is FMCG. I think it has given a return of over 940% over the last uh, 12 years. Uh, you know, every other sector like banking, pharma, IT, they are substantially less than that. And the reason is very simple. You know, while we do get a little intimidated by the price earnings ratio of these companies, we need to understand that they've got extremely robust return on equity. And you know, with low asset basis, they can sustain these ROEs for a very long time. And, and, and that is the advantage that an ITC or even a Hindustan lever has. They're able to sustain high ROEs for a very long time. Uh, you are right, you know, uh, on a standalone basis, the PE does look a little steep, but if you compare it with the ROE, I don't think the PE is exactly that steep. So I wouldn't give too much credence to the uh, PE ratio of ITC. Okay. 
I would more look at it as a play on the revival of rural demand because right. of a good monsoon that we have had in this year. Uh, I just want to throw ITC at uh, Mr. Thakkar as well. You know, I, if, I, if one looks at the chart, and I'm, I'm just, just taking a slightly longer chart in place here, let's say about a two-year chart or so, or a three-year chart, uh, then uh, there is that movement that you're seeing, but then it gets kind of capped very close to that 265, 260, uh, 270 level. And unless it crosses 272 or uh, I would say 272, then it is kind of capped in the immediate wave technically, isn't it, Mr. Tucker? Absolutely. See, uh, we have seen this stock, in fact, uh, taking resistance around those levels of 272 because there is there was a huge resistance of an uptrend line. And uh, since then, you know, that which was formed in somewhere, say, uh, February to 2015, so it's almost more than one year now that we have not seen IDC surpassing those levels, in fact, trading quite below that. But recent development, what we have seen is that it has uh, also taken out its intermediate resistance, which was at somewhere uh, 240 to 41, and is now managing to, you know, hold on about those levels of 241. So I think till it's not uh, closing below 241, the chances or the probability of first it inching towards the levels of 272 is quite high. So I, uh, my take would be that as of now, those who are already holding long can continue to do so. The stop loss plays below 241 on a closing basis. Those who want to enter fresh, they can too. Uh, stop loss below 241 can be done. It's a and, buy uh, for you as well. 272 on the immediate basis. So yeah, it's, it's a buy. It's a short term buy. Initial target definitely well. will be 272. Right. In fact, we Perfect. should put that. That this is ITC is a buy both on a short term basis with a target of about 272 and a stop loss below 241 at a uh, closing basis. This is on a technical short term trading basis and in long term view, yes, Harir has also put a buy on ITC. So very, very interesting. Both our guests, uh, they're uh, saying that it's a buy. Um, uh, Pankaj has a few questions, gentlemen. Right. Uh, uh, Harir, I wanted to ask you about HCL Tech, you know, in an environment where uh, other companies or other large cap companies are not growing. HCL Tech has given a good growth of six and a half. A lot of it is also led by acquisition, but organic growth is also not small. It's about three odd percent. You know, how would you value this company? Would it, uh, from a discount, start to trade at a slightly higher PE multiple, or you would be worried about the sector growth and then, uh, you know, HCL not growing in the coming few quarters? No, I would primarily worry about the sector growth, you know, because uh, if you look at the overall IT spending and the, you look at the latest Gartner report on the likely IT spending, uh, there is likely to be about one to one and a half percent compression as far as the global IT spend is concerned. So I think that is going to impact most of the IT companies in a very uniform and uh, systematic manner. So from that perspective, at a macro level, I have my concerns. Secondly, if you look at IT, you know, uh, some of the major IT uh, verticals like uh, hydrocarbons, that is oil and gas, uh, you know, to a large extent, um, uh, you know, if, if you look at the BFSI, which is probably stable, uh, if, if, if you look at, you know, uh, other segments like design, uh, there have been a lot of segments that have been kind of either stagnant or they are kind of really not growing in a very big way. So, if you ask me, uh, HCL Tech probably, yes, it had corrected substantially from about 940 to about 740. So there was a, uh, you know, a certain buying case made at lower levels. But at the current price of 840, 845, is there a margin of safety? My answer is no, there is no margin of safety at these levels. Right, Hariya, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Ajay, always a pleasure.